My name is Henrik Jorgensen. I have lived in the forests at the edge of the Hjalmark and Skyrim nearly my entire adult life. Shortly after I moved here, I found an abandoned wolf pup whom I named Miko. I raised him as my own and today we are the best of friends. For a long time now we have lived a simple life, living off the land and the occasional trader. But recently there has been a shift in these woods. A darkness sweeps over the wildlife here and I fear our safety and our way of life may be in danger. Can't you ever just let me sleep in? Ah, oh, you're such an impatient creature. Uh. Yes, yes, I know. I am up, Miko. <sighs> you know... I could have left you right where you were that day, and no one would have been the wiser. I am joking, of course. I'm just busting your chops. <sighs> Another beautiful day in Skyrim, Miko. What do you suppose we should get into today? Uh, you're probably hungry, aren't you? It's... It doesn't look like we really have anything you can eat, huh? And that rabbit is probably starting to go bad by now. I should have smoked it days ago. Well... Do you want to go catch us some food, Miko? Huh. Do you see that, Miko? It's another mud crab. This one is just as far from the river as the others. It is strange. No wounds or markings, just like the others. No obvious cause of death. Hmm. It's a strange Miko, is it not? What do you think? Think you can uh, sniff it out for us? Fine, be that way, you know, you're just as stubborn as your father. Let's go. It is gorgeous, is it not, Miko? Home is truly a wondrous place. Do you see that, Miko? An elk. Quiet. Quick, Miko! After them! Yes! Got him right in the heart. Good shooting, wouldn't you say, Miko? Hey, you think you're gonna be able to eat this all by yourself? <laughs> I think your eyes are bigger than your stomach, Miko. <laughs> Do 
So I am thinking we take these to Dragon's Bridge. It's probably too late to sell them tonight, but we can spend the night there, assault the meats, and then we can sell them tomorrow. Deal? Come on, Miko, keep up! This way, I know what I'm doing here, Miko. Greetings. Hmm. Strange. Miko, there's no one here. It's almost never this dead in Dragon's Bridge, even at nighttime. Fine scale armor you've got on there. Shiny. Thanks. What an odd man. Ah, <sighs> the four shields. Here we are, Miko. This was it. It was time to call it a night. It had been a long, hard day of hunting for Miko and I, but I knew Feda the innkeeper well. It was time to get some answers. I asked her about what was going on, and if she knew why no one was visiting Dragon's Bridge anymore. She had no answers for me, only unsubstantiated rumors and gossip about who could be sabotaging their businesses. Before I rented a room, she suggested taking a trip to Solitude up the road to see if perhaps there was an event there or something that had happened that could be affecting Dragon's Bridge. I fell asleep that night with more questions than I had answers. Miko and I woke up the next day and... To our pleasant surprise, there were at least a few travelers in the inn now. I was fortunate enough to quickly find a traveling fur and meat trader who was more than willing to buy the excess elk meat we had caught from the day before. I had Feda cook Miko and I a meal with the meat that remained, and we took a moment to enjoy our delicious hot meal. Finally, it was time to go and we set off for solitude. As I approached the gates, I was unnerved by the mass of people leaving the city. They were oddly silent, too, and quite wary of me as I approached, never breaking their gaze with mine. Something very strange was going on and I needed to get to the bottom of it. This unnerving feeling only intensified when, as I got closer to solitude's gates, I spotted an elf wearing a mask of some sort. Again, they remained quiet, and again, they seemed wary of me. I greeted the guard as I entered solitude and decided it would be best to get to the bottom of this as quickly as possible, as I was now getting an uncomfortable feeling even being in solitude. I asked around the townsfolk and even ran into another masked elf, but no one seemed to be able to give any concrete answers. If they even allowed me to speak to them. Most of them were avoiding socializing at all and went out of their way to keep their distance from others. It is one of the strangest humanoid behaviors I have ever witnessed. I even sought counsel with the Jarl of Solitude, but the guard there barred the entrance from me, insisting they weren't taking any visitors. I was quite frustrated at this point and I may or may not have referred to his mother as being closely related to a certain Daedric goddess, but thankfully he remained professional about it all. Finally, someone mentioned a woman in Right Run who apparently has taken an interest in what they referred to as a play. It was quickly becoming apparent that I had bitten off more than I could chew, but I was going to see this through. For Miko, our home and our way of life. I had to see this through. 
I hitched a ride with a man who had a traveling carriage service to Whiterun, and we thankfully made it there by nightfall. The city of Whiterun is truly a sight to behold. A remarkable piece of true Nord architecture. I quickly made my way towards the front gates of Whiterun when I was stopped by a guard. He informed me that there had been dragon sightings as of late, and most recently, a dragon had attacked and destroyed the nearby village of Helgen. As a result, they were not allowing anyone entry into the city, and all travel in and out had been shut down. I pleaded my case with the guard, informing him I had made the journey all the way from solitude and insisting that I was only there to help, and he reluctantly agreed to allow me entry. I thanked him profusely and made my way into the city. Whiterun is truly even more beautiful and elaborately built when you look at it from inside its walls. I had only heard of Dragon's Reach's magnificence in tales and stories, but to see it in person was truly awe-inspiring. An intricate marvel of Nord architecture and brilliance. I quietly made my way inside the building and almost immediately, a beautiful woman stood out to me amongst the rest. As I approached timidly, she seemed to recognize me immediately, as if she had known me my whole life. Last we met, I knew it was right for me to wait here at Dragon's Reach. I'm Livia, a prefect from the Imperial Legion. I've been trying to find you, for Skyrim faces a most evil threat that demands every hero's sword. Yours is the sharpest among all of them. For that, we need your aid. To stop a plague that's slaughtering the people and raising them as undead. Undead? Certainly you cannot be serious. Um, we haven't even met before. Why do you trust me so much to join your cause? You've shown great promise from what my father's spies have observed. You're a powerful fighter. At least I'm told you are or will be. Now that we face a threat unseen for centuries, Skyrim needs her hero. Spies? So you are spying on me? That's no reason to trust a stranger, even if they might become a powerful ally. I can defend myself well enough in case you turn rogue, though I believe you won't. I wouldn't be so the sure. The question is yours to answer. If you can't trust a girl you've just met, then you ought to trust in my cause. <laughs> Your cause. The plague cause. threatens everyone. Sooner or later, we all have to put down our differences to face it. We're just doing it before the rest of the world. There are just greater things at stake. Fine. Tell me about your encounter with this plague. At first, it was just random undead attacks in the wilderness. I ran into a small squad of them and found a soul gem on one of those corpses. The soul gem reeks of an unknown power that no one could destroy. When the plague began to spread, I realized the evil behind them were related. I returned to my commander, a legate who goes by the alias The Mistress, to seek her advice, only to run into a meeting between her and an agent. In the meeting, a place named Aranaceris was mentioned. She said there's something in there that can turn the tides to the Empire's favor. The agent was then to seek out Aranaceris and stop the plague before it spread to the rest of Skyrim. So if we find him or her... Him or her? You don't even know if the agent is a man or a woman? Uh, I confess. The secret meeting's attendees didn't include me. Talos. Couldn't hear the important details or saw the agent's face either. Just know that he or she is from Cyrodiil, and handpicked by the mistress herself. But I assure you, if the mistress chooses someone, then the agent must be a crucial part in her plan, and be much better informed than we are. So what you're saying is this soul gem holds the key to stopping the plague? Heroes think likewise. That's why I've kept it till now. The best course of action is to inquire the wise mages around Skyrim. 
Learn the magic behind this soul gem, <coughs> then break it and save Skyrim. Okay, and you want me to fight alongside you to stop the plague. Will you come with me? You, me, that agent? After we found him or her, the three of us unveil the soul gem secret, stop the plague, save Skyrim? You know, this sounds well, good and well, but you know me and I don't know you, I'll decide when I know who I am working with. Fine. You'll know eventually. I guess there's no need for this secrecy. I'm the daughter of Amalia Selvian, Cyrodiil's High Chancellor and its eighth champion. I would have been in the Legion right now, but General Tullius gave me a break from my duties back before the Helgen incident. That means I'm going to try to stop the plague without an army behind my back. This, well, is where you come in. Saving Skyrim seems like a good enough cause for me. Let's fight I'm together, glad then. to hear that. Right, and uh, you know your way around a sword, I see. Observant. I've fought my share of undead back in Cyrodiil's necromancer dens. And against them, I have some gifts of my own. In battle, I'm skilled in sword and shield, like my father, the best swordsman in Cyrodiil. I'm not the best archer, but shooting undead is an easy task. Now for magic, my family has a condition that blocks magicka. Magic affects me less than it would another. A great advantage against necromancers. You need my skills, and I need your strength. Together, we'll defeat whichever <coughs> villains are behind the plague. Good. So the task ahead. Do you have a plan <coughs> to track the mistress's agent? No, but there's one thing we should use to our advantage. Unlike in Cyrodiil, Skyrim cities are small, so everyone knows everyone. The civilians must be able to recognize a stranger, especially one who might be investigating the plague. Let's inquire them. Okay. We'll find the agent, then we'll stop the plague. The glory shall be our motherland. Let's bring the fight to the wicked. After agreeing to Livia's terms and discussing the future of Skyrim, we made our way out of Dragon's Reach and down the stairs, towards the main hub of Whiterun. As we made our way down, I was captivated by the beauty of the city. The large willow standing tall in the center, and the elaborate aqueducts weaving in between structures and landscape alike. We stood there, the three of us, Livia, Miko, and I, and just stared. We knew we had a lot of work ahead of us, but in this moment, the worries of the world seem to just melt away. This is what we were fighting for. These people who built this great nation, who sacrificed so much already in this terrible civil war. It was them we were fighting for. For the first time, it was no longer about Miko and I. No, this was much much bigger. <laughs>